Hello from Ellen Road, where Hull City have been beaten by three goals to one on a night where I thought they played really, really well. They were a goal down after 10 minutes uh, to Sam Byram, uh, which was unfortunate and obviously the start they didn't want, but they recovered really well. They played some great football, dominated the game. I think there was a stat at one point on Sky Sports that had said that City had had more possession than the team would. Um, and they deservedly got themselves level just after the half hour mark when Fabio Carvalho turned in at the near post after brilliant work from Tyler Morton uh, and they carried on dominating. They didn't create, I guess, if we're being uber critical once again, they didn't create enough attempts on goal. Uh, I think they only had two shots on goal in the entire game and obviously one was Carvalho's goal. Again, that's proven to be an Achilles heel for them. They're creating moments created a lot of moments in the game. Uh, second half, they were brilliant again. Philogene had a couple of efforts wide. Abdush, probably the moment where Tyler Morton surges forward with the score at one each. Uh, you know, he surges towards the edge, of, the edge of the penalty area, slots in Abdush, who bends the ball far corner, and it goes wide of, of, of Melier's uh, post. And that was, you kind of felt that could be a, a big moment in the game. They didn't take that chance. And the game is heading for what you think is going to be a draw and you like with everybody else losing today and Leeds' his home record you probably go well, well we'll take the point we'll go to Cardiff and, and try and claw back more but then at Somerville who was a live wire all night and to be fair Regan, was playing, Regan Slater was playing right back and, and dealt with him after the first goal where he got down the side um, Regan dealt with him brilliantly all, all night and then the, the one moment, game. look, these games are all decided on moments, aren't they? And very often they're decided on, on errors or moments of brilliance. And Somerville looked to take on Slater. He dangled the leg Slater just outside the penalty area. Somerville was running at pace, almost running out of space, actually. Then he went down behind the goal line and Slater, a little bit of contact, and he goes down and the referee's going to give it. He just is. It's soft. Yes, it's soft. Um, Regan was angry. But I think that was more himself that he'd got done. He dealt with him so well all night and he got done on it one moment and then Somerville steps up after arguing with uh, Joel Perrault and sticks it down the middle and suddenly they've won the game. And the third goal, great finish from Dan James. You have to give him that. You know, 96 minutes, City are pushing. Ryan Allsop's gone forward for a corner. Uh, they get caught out and, and James from out wide, just inside the, the, um, the leads off. He sticks it in the corner, in the net, great finish. So 3-1 looks far more comfortable than it is, than it was. Um, but as I say, games like this are decided on moments. And, uh, and, and in those moments, City, for all their possession, all their wonderful play and control of the game, keeping the crowd quiet, frustrating the crowd, they, they just didn't create enough saves for Melier. And that is the frustration. They end up losing the game that they, were, they deserve more from. But that's football at this level and Leeds are a good side. They've got good players, they've got match-winning footballers, uh, and, and so it proved they go back second in the table. City dropped to 10th, which, you know, for the players they've got, it's mind-boggling, really. But that's the reality when you don't win a game in six matches, and for City, the playoffs now, I mean, admittedly, they're no further adrift than they were at the start of play, given the fact that Norwich, Coventry and Preston have all lost. But they've somehow they've dropped down a, a place because Middlesbrough have gone above them. They've still got that game in hand, on Norwich, which is at Coventry, um, but they need wins now. You know they're six points off. They've got seven games to go. They need wins. They have to go to Cardiff and win. They've got two games against Borough and QPR at home next week. Next week, next midweek uh, after Cardiff, they have to win those games. They can't. You know the time for drawing matches. Although you'd have taken a point tonight on the balance of play, they've got to find wins. They've got to start winning games because. That what would be an absolute tragedy for this team is if they end up finishing 10th, 11th would be you know, a real gut-wrenching disappointment because they don't deserve it but ultimately you know, in the, in the, in the key moments in it, the City's season is not going to be decided on games like this it's, you know, throughout the season we've had, we've had games against you know, Birmingham, uh, Stoke, Swansea games where they should have won games but they haven't won and you know Yes, they've been punished tonight, but th their, their season isn't over because of tonight. And it isn't over yet, you know. You still have to maintain, you know, there's, there's still a chance. There's still seven games to go and anything can happen. We've seen Norwich beaten well at Leicester today. We've seen Coventry beaten at home by Cardiff and 
um, Preston being in Birmingham, it goes to show that this is the championship and anything's possible. So all the time there's a chance, you have to you have to believe. And if they can go to Cardiff and replicate this performance, be, but be more clinical, then they've got a chance. They have got a chance. And you know, those people that watched were either here tonight or watched it on the telly box will know what a quality performance this was against a side that you know are gunning for automatic promotion. Were in the Premier League last year. So there's a lot to be positive about, but as I said, their season isn't going to be defined on what happened tonight. It's more defined than what happened on Friday night against Stoke when they were awful. So that is frustrating, but it is what it is. Um, on the subject of the team selection, he, uh, Liam sprung a surprise or two, didn't he, with um, with going Regan at right back and Louis Coyle in the centre at the expense of Sean McLaughlin. Um, he went with Abdu he brought Abdush back and Ozan Tufan at the expense of Zorori and Ohio. Zorori came off the bench. I thought two <coughs> excuse me. I thought Tufan was excellent. I thought Abdush was excellent. I thought Morton and Seri in the middle of the park. I thought Jones and Coyle were brilliant. And I thought Seri uh, Regan was excellent until obviously the, you know he's had a brain freeze, hasn't he, with the, the penalty. And that's in these games, that's what happens. You know, in these atmospheres, big games decided on moments and and ultimately, that's the moment that cost them. Greavesy, um, Danny, I think it was Danny that said, Great, Greavesy, yeah. Losing Greavesy is a massive blow. We knew it was going to be before before Stoke. They missed him against Stoke. They've missed him here tonight. Um, he's a big loss. At least he's back for Saturday. Uh, Coyle, Louis, obviously, Louis Coyle went off injured. So did Ryan Giles. Giles, I thought, was poor tonight. His worst performance. Just kept making mistakes. Uh, mistake after mistake. And um, yeah, he went off injured. We don't know the extent of those. They'll be assessed, and hopefully, nothing too serious. And they're back for the weekend. Matty Jacob came on and did okay. Cyrus came on for Louis and looked, looked like he'd not played in quite a long time, if I'm honest. For, again, I thought Alfred Jones was, was very good. Um, Danny, yeah, look, it's had, it has a, the team's had a lot of investment, and results since the turn of the year haven't been great on the for the most part. And that is that, that is an idea, listen. That is. Um, what can you say? It's frustrating, isn't it? Because they, they deliver a performance of that quality like at Southampton and win. And then you know, they, they perform like they did against Stoke and lose. And they're just too inconsistent. They're not consistent enough in, in, in result. Liam talks a lot about performance, about consistency in performance. And <clears throat> for the most part, their performances are relatively consistent. But they're not, they're not creating the chances, the good chances. And they're just not scoring goals. You know, two shots on target for all their good play, is a poor return. They didn't have a shot on target against Stoke. And that is that is a problem. They are missing Liam Delap, but with the players like Jake, I mean, Jane, again tonight, I don't know what's wrong. I thought he was really poor tonight. Defensively, he was, he was a horror show. Every time he, he tried to take a player on, he gave it away. Um, you know, earlier in the season, some of his defensive work were, was absolutely brilliant, but he's, he, Jaden has gone massively off the boil. Um, I don't know what the issue is there, but he's not. He's not the same player he was, uh, and that's that's a problem. Obviously, Zerur is in and out, shows flashes of brilliance, but hasn't had the impact I think that we all thought he he would do when he when he arrived in January. Um, obviously, we're not seeing Billy Sharp. I, I did think as the game wore on, I wondered if Billy if, if if he might if he might throw Billy Sharp on to try and nick a winner or something. But obviously, he didn't. So look, I don't know what. It, it's really really frustrating. It's sad because they played really well tonight, but they've got punished in the key moments and that is what decides games and uh, they've got to go to Cardiff now and win so yeah Chris you make a good point on, on Facebook yeah Chris look they, they, they've had all the possession tonight haven't they like, like I said before they've had a lot of ball they've played, played some lovely football they've, 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 they've been in the game until the 88th minute and then one of their players has made a massive mistake and they've been punished for it and at this level if you make mistakes against good teams, you will get punished. And you know, Leeds got that bit of luck with the penalty, uh, and then obviously the third goal is a consequence of trying to chase, trying to trying to get back into it. That is, that's what happens. But it is you have to, you can't get away from the fact that 88 minutes in, Regan makes a big mistake. Um, he's given so much to the cause. He's played so well tonight, but that won't have any. You know, he'll go to bed tonight not thinking oh, I played quite well in the game. Actually, he'll go to bed thinking I've made a right cock up. If I'd not. Have, done that they don't get the penalty and they might not win the game who's to say that after that they don't get another chance to score but um, Danny yeah it's an interesting one 
on the subject of uh, Sean McLaughlin, it, it was a surprise that he wasn't. He didn't play. Perhaps I, I mean I didn't think he was great against Stoke, if I'm honest. But you know, you think coming to Ellen Road without Greavesy that that he was a shoe in to play alongside um, Alfie, who was exceptional. But you know, Liam decided that he felt that that, that going Coyle in the centre and, and Regan to match match Regan up against Somerville was the reason. Um, Hey, look, Charlie, I think maybe, but Regan's a sort of player that you can play him anywhere and he'll give you a shift. He'll put a shift in. And actually, for the most part, he played really well tonight. He kept some of them relatively quiet, but it only takes one moment, doesn't it? And that one moment, he fell asleep, he let, he let some of them get past him, and he brought him down. Um, and players make mistakes, they're only human. He made a mistake and, and he, he, got, yeah, he got punished. Yeah, Chris, I agree. Yeah, Macca didn't do great. I, I didn't think he was great in the friendly out in Turkey against Curacao. Difficult, admittedly, not played for a while. Um, but I, I think you, you've got to be right. If he was, you know, if he was doing it, if he was at that level, he would have played tonight. So there's obviously a reason why he didn't play play Sean. Uh, you know, coming to Leeds without Greavesy, there's a reason, isn't there? He's seen, there's something he's seen in the friendly against Curacao in training, the game against Stoke uh, that that he didn't like. He didn't feel that, for whatever reason, playing Sean McLaughlin here was the right decision. That, that, that much is obvious by the fact he's not played him. Um, Lee, yeah, I heard about Philogene. Um, I know all the other players. The, the, the support tonight was brilliant. 3,000 over there in the corner. Um, I don't know what the issue was with Jaden straight down the tunnel. I'm not sure. I'll ask, I will ask Liam about that on Thursday uh, when, when all the other players... Um, Went, went and applauded the supporters. Jaden's not been in good form. He really hasn't been in, a, in good form in this last few weeks. Probably since Ro- since the Rabona actually against Rotherham. I don't think he's played well. I think his his work ethic hasn't been the, as high. Uh, his, his end product hasn't been. You know there was a, there was points earlier in the season when um, yeah you, you'd see Jaden chasing back and he'd be winning tackles and you couldn't get the ball off him. Now it's like taking sweets off a baby. And there's so many times tonight that he he tried to. He tried to take two two players on, would lose it, and, and then wouldn't chase back, or it, just too easy to take the ball off him. And I think that is a real problem. There's, there's you know, whether it's a confidence issue, I don't know. We, we saw him; he, 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 he did the business for England, you know, during the international break. So um, there's clearly, you know, something something not right. Um, and, you know, Liam needs to try and get to the bottom of it because he's not getting the best out of one of the best players in the league at the minute, and that is a problem. That, you know, he is. You know, along with Carvalho, the player in the team that's capable of, of producing something, the moment of magic, and that isn't happening at the minute, and that is something that they need to try and uh, get to the bottom of and get Jaden Philogene back playing to his best and, and, and affecting games positively because that hasn't happened for quite a long time now. Uh, they're not creating. I, I come back to my point. They're not creating enough for all their tonight for all their good play. They're not creating enough moments. And yeah, you'll say people will say, well, if they had a striker. Bloody bloody blah. I think this team is is now so used to playing without a striker, and they're set up to play without a striker that when you bring one in, it looks a bit disjointed. As we saw on Friday, you know, Noah Ohio came came in for his debut, ran ran around a lot, but they couldn't really get him into the game, and that's because everybody else, the, the team is so set up now to play without an out and out centre forward that you put one in the team and it doesn't look right. Um, you counter that argument by saying if there was somebody in the penalty area, maybe you've got a bit a threat in there. Uh, like I say, I think I think it's easy to say after the event because at one at one all you're probably taking what you've got as to why you didn't ch- you didn't chuck Ohio on or, or Billy Sharp for that last couple of minutes. But equally, I don't know. That's why he's paid the, the mega money, isn't it, to make those decisions? But I think they did more than enough tonight to get something out of it. They deserve something out of it. But you have to give as much as it pains me to say it about Leeds United. You have to give them credit. They they kept going they didn't play well they were second best for, for, for much of much of the game although they came more into it later on second half um, but City you, you, you just don't get they're just not clinical enough are they and that's that's something we've said for weeks and weeks and weeks and ultimately as I said before their season isn't def- going to be defined by tonight you know they've, they've played well at Leeds they've won at Leicester they've won at Southampton it's, it is going to be defined by results at home, and that is where they've struggled to, to fashion chances and, and put the ball in the back of the net. Now they've got seven games. You know, it's, it's win or bust now, isn't it? They've got nothing to lose. They're down in tenth. They've got to go to Cardiff and they've got to play on the front foot and try and, and, and try and win the game and start scoring some goals. Um, and then you've got two home games against Borough and QPR. You've got to go and win them. And you know, draws are no good. At the, you know, 
draws are, are of no use now. They're starting to get the six points adrift. They've only got seven games to go. They've got to start winning football matches and, and they've got to start scoring goals. So um, it looks like they're closing up here at Ellen Road. So thank you for watching, everybody. Um, we will have plenty more reaction to come over the next few days. The podcast, the 1904 Club, will be released tomorrow. I think tomorrow, Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday, we are going to be recording it slightly later tomorrow. So it'll be t tomorrow afternoon with myself, Burnsy, Fletch and Prutz, who was covering the game tonight. So it'll be interesting to get Prutz's thoughts on that. If you want to get in touch with us um, at the 1904 Club, you can do so on Twitter or X as it is now. Just tweet us uh, and we'll, we'll talk about what you've said. Uh, we'll be back at Cottingham on Thursday for the press conference with Liam Rossini and a player. And then we'll be down in South Wales on Saturday where we, I think they'll go and win there, if I'm honest. So I'll put my neck on the line. Um, let's hope they do. And those that are going to South Wales, fair play. Uh, and we will see you down there. Safe travels, everybody. Thank you for watching and we'll speak to you again soon.